Good morning, and welcome to worship uh, on this post-July 4th Sunday. Uh, hopefully everybody had a great 4th. How many of you hit the pancake breakfast here in Ely? Yes, uh, good as always. Nice to not be sweltering uh, on, as you stand in line or as you eat, uh, and the rain's held off long enough. Uh, for that event. Uh, it looks like it was well attended. Uh, and then uh, the parade in the afternoon. Uh, how many of you enjoyed fireworks before the rains came? No? I mean, there were... Uh, 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 Elder Miller said, you know, uh, we don't have one here on the 4th, but boy, just go outside. There's plenty of different displays. And sure enough, there were around these parts. Uh, we were uh, at relatives, uh, and they shot some off, and then we hustled in front of the rain, and as we're coming, basically everywhere you looked, you could see some kind of fireworks display. Uh, it's good to be back with you after uh, a Sunday away. Uh, appreciation to John Meyer and all our volunteers uh, who uh, helped make sure that uh, worship happened. Uh, we are in the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, and today it is about following Jesus. It is good that we are gathered together. I invite us to stand as we sing our gathering hymn. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We praise you for water. And give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. We praise you for water, for through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. We praise you for water, through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. We praise you for water, at the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. We praise you for water. For by water and your word, you claim us as your own, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. And we sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God of the covenant, in our baptism you call us to proclaim the coming of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles, that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We'll continue with the readings. Our first reading comes from Ezekiel, the second chapter. In 507, no, 5... 597 BC, the priest Ezekiel was removed into exile in Babylon. While there, he received a vision of God appearing majestically on a chariot throne. Today's reading accounts God's commissioning of Ezekiel during this vision. The prophet is to speak God's word to a people unwilling to hear. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said, mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 123, which we will read responsibly. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt. And the second reading comes from the second, the twelfth chapter of Second Corinthians. Christians do not boast of their own accomplishments. Rather, Christian boasting focuses attention on how the power of Christ is present in our lives especially in times of weakness and vulnerability. No matter what our circumstances in life, Christ's grace is sufficient for us. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. 
And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. And by his hand as we sing our greeting to the gospel. Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus left that place, came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them, and he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went out among the villages teaching. He called the twelve, and he began to send them out two by two, gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, they refuse to hear you. As you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Let me take you back to the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus begins his ministry after John is arrested by going throughout the region of Galilee. He's proclaiming the good news of God that the time is fulfilled and the reign of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And then he begins to gather disciples. And do you remember what Jesus says to them? What is the invitation Jesus has for these disciples? Do you remember? It's follow me, right? And they respond by getting up and following him. In Mark, Jesus' call to people is not to believe in him, but to follow him. 
There's only one time in the Gospel of Mark that the phrase, believe in me, appears in reference to Jesus. But there are at least four times where Jesus specifically tells people, follow me, Simon and Andrew, follow me, Levi, follow me. And there are many more places where you hear the disciples and crowds followed him from place to place. And so since this seems to be what Jesus wants, it might be good to figure out, well, what does it mean to follow Jesus? How many of you have ever played follow the leader? Yeah? Okay. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid growing up, my playmates were often fine little legalists. And so if you didn't follow exactly as they did something, the manner in which they jumped over the creek or right, the footwork they did in this thing, you were out. And so when you played follow the leader, you studied what they did pretty closely so that you could duplicate exactly what they did. So following in this case was not just watching them and studying them Following is joining in the activity. Going where they go, doing what they do as closely as possible. Now the Gospel of Mark is my favorite gospel, but I have to admit, it was just this past week in looking at this text that I saw clearly that Mark does not call on us to believe in Jesus, but to follow him. Not just study his moves, but to get up and follow after him in imitation of him. In this way, Mark is a bit like Luke, where faith is an action word. Now, we have two vignettes in our reading from Mark today. In the first, we get a group of people who know Jesus, right? He goes to his hometown. It's not big. It's a bit like Ely. You know who's who, right? They grew up with him. They knew his family. And they can't believe that that kid is now this person. Yeah, this is not who a prophet of God is and where he comes from. Important people come from money. They, they, they've got a lineage behind them. They aren't born and raised in a backwater town and working with their hands. So these folks from his hometown can't see it. They won't accept it because, well, they know who Jesus is. Jesus doesn't seem to get too upset by their rejection, though, does he? He just kind of shakes his head and goes on his way, proclaiming all the while. And I think this is Jesus deliberately playing leader to his disciples' followers for their benefit. Because in the next vignette, Jesus invites the disciples to join him in proclaiming. This proclaiming that he says is what he came out to do. So, okay, pause for a moment. Let's go back to Mark 1. What is it that Jesus proclaims? What's his message? Anybody remember that from Mark 1? After John is arrested, Jesus goes throughout Galilee proclaiming that the reign of God has come near, and what should people do? Repent. What does repent mean? Change your thinking, right? Change your thinking, repent, turn back, and believe in the good news. And what's the good news? That the reign of God has come near, right? The language is such that it's so near, how near you can feel its breath on your cheek. You can tell whether they had garlic for lunch. God has come near in that. Now note, Jesus does not say to his followers that he is sending out, go and proclaim me. Instead, he says, come and proclaim with me. And this proclamation is in order that people should change their thinking, repent. The purpose of proclamation is that people would repent, would change their thinking. 
From what to what? Well, from thinking like you do in the reign of empire in the world to the thinking that the reign of God has come near in Jesus. So, what does the thinking of the reign of the world look like? It's fear of brute force and power. Rome rules the world at that time through both of those. Sure, there is the Pax Romana, the peace of Rome, but it comes at the point of a sword. Through the Roman legions, through Roman commerce, the reign of the world is about keeping power through any means. It's a place where a man can be beheaded because the ruler swore a drunken oath. It's a place where you can be arrested for not worshiping the right God. It's a place where each person or group of people looks out for their own good. What does the reign of God look like that is different from this reign around them? Well, I think Paul in his letter to the Corinthians has an answer for this one. It's a place where power comes to completion, to fullness in weakness. It's Jesus on the cross. God's power on display, Paul says. The reign of God is one where those on the fringes are healed and brought into the fold. It's where those who are sinners and outcasts are engaged in community, not ostracized. It's where mercy and grace rule the day, where reconciliation is sought, not destruction. Go to the Gospel of John, right? And it's where we love one another in the same way that God has loved us in Jesus Christ. It's where people are looked at not as potential enemies and competitors, but as those created in the image of God to be treated with respect. Change your thinking. And this is what Jesus invites and empowers us as his followers to do. This is what baptism claims us to do, not just to believe Jesus as a fine concept, but to leave behind those things we know best. Sometimes even our job, our families, our comfortable place in the world as we know it and follow him, copy his moves. To join him in proclaiming that the reign of God has come near. And that change in thinking frees all of us. It frees us from the oppression of the thinking of this world. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what that would be like? If so, you have repented. You've changed your thinking. Now, Jesus gives his followers a warning, one very like what God gave the prophet Ezekiel at the start of his ministry. We heard that in our first reading. Ezekiel is called by God to be a prophet. Now, a prophet in the Hebrew scriptures is not a soothsayer, is not a predictor of the future with coded words. Prophets are mouthpieces of God. They proclaim God's message. And Ezekiel is told, I'm going to send you to a people who will not listen to my word. You will proclaim it until you are blue in the face, and they won't respond at all. But they will know they have heard the word of God. Now, how's that for a job description? Go do this. They ain't going to listen to you. By any worldly measure of success, you're a failure. But you're doing what you're called to do, and they'll know they've heard the word of God. Now, in Mark, Jesus equips his disciples to go out two by two. Take a little backup with them. That's kind of nice, right? A little moral support. 
but they're to pack such that they depend on the hospitality of those that they serve, right? No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. It's funny if you think about it. Jesus sends them out in such a way that they need help from those that they are there to serve. That's how they'll live. He also tells them to not take advantage on moving on up if people respond well to the message that you proclaim. If you go and they, res- you know, some place takes you in, this home takes you in over here, maybe on the wrong side of the tracks, and they respond well, the community responds well to what you are proclaiming, and somebody says, well, you ought to come up on over to the McMansion. No, stay where you were first welcomed, because it's not about that. It's about the word. But Jesus also gives them instruction as to what to do if folks don't want to hear the message. Just move on, he says. Don't curse them. The the dust off the feet, uh, one of the most interesting interpretations of that that I've heard is, hey, just don't even take anything from them, not even the dust of the place. Look, we didn't take anything from you. We came to give. Okay. Off we go. Just accept what it is he says and move on, just like Jesus did in his hometown, right? Follow me. Oh, okay, they're not ready for it. Off we go to the next place. Just keep spreading the word, the seed of the word. That is the proclamation that God's reign has come near in Jesus and people should change their thinking. It won't always be received. You won't always know why it hasn't been received, but just take what happens in stride. Trust that God will do God's work in making the harvest to grow. You just keep following Jesus and proclaiming with him, spreading the seed of the word. How are you doing at following Jesus? Do you honor him, value following him in your life? Do we imagine that whether we have known Jesus all our lives or just for a few years, that he still has something to teach us? That there are surprises yet to be discovered? Or do we imagine we already know who Jesus is and what he does? Have we done what those who knew Jesus best and so bound our understanding of who he is that he can do no deed of power in us? Not that he can't, but that when we don't even look for him to do so, how can it happen? Friends, I am an imperfect follower of Jesus. I don't always honor and value him above all other things in life. I'm imperfect at following him and proclaiming him. Unfortunately, you guys are the victims of that sometimes. But I do know from experience that there is always more to be discovered in following him. And each discovery frees me a little bit more. Each transforms my thinking just a little bit more, perhaps a little closer to that reign of God thinking. And that transformed thinking changes how I am and how I act for the better both for me and for the world. Now, the life of following Jesus is not something That can be boiled down to three steps or four rules. I wish it was. We try and do that sometimes. It's not just about being together in worship, although that's a great way to hear God's word and encounter the risen Christ. It's about daily steps. Not necessarily big steps. Baby steps work, but consistent. Steps in reading scripture, steps in praying without ceasing, steps in recognizing those who are on the fringes, steps in approaching them and seeking 
as best you can to make them whole. It's not always easy. Just look at Jesus' disciples and how they're treated. Heck, look at Jesus and how he's treated. It's not always easy, but it is always worth it. Worth it to escape this oppressive and depressing thinking of this reign of the world and replace it with the vibrancy and life-giving thinking of the reign of God. Friends, you have been called and equipped by God for this. Through the waters of baptism that bring life, the Holy Spirit that has given each of you a unique set of gifts and abilities that are essential for the mission and ministry of following Jesus in the world. Jesus has given you this community of faith just as he sent out the twelve two by two for support for encouragement, and to keep us from getting distracted, right? And he has provided us with food for the journey. His own body and blood, the word that is both proclaimed and shown to us in Jesus. And so I invite you to join in following Jesus. To change your stinking thinking from that of the reign of the world to the reign of God. And then to proclaim that good news to others in all that you say and do. To bear witness to that reign come near so that others might pent. So that they too might know this life-giving and life-changing love of God Come to us in Jesus Christ. For only in him do we find life that truly is life. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day.
united as one in the communion of saints and the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. Glorious God, you bend down to wash the feet of your disciples. Let the servant church arise in our teaching, our praying, our healing, and our doing. Make all your faithful people powerful in weakness and strong in grace. In your mercy. Life-giving God, your fingers trace the heavens, your hands molded the earth. Where there is drought, bring nourishing rain. Where there is devastation from fire or flood, bring relief. Sustain the well-being of every living thing. That this great trust you have given us might sustain many generations to come. In your mercy. Merciful God, you speak and the nations listen. Open those who govern to the cries of all people, especially those fleeing violence and poverty. Grant leaders and citizens a measure of your wisdom and mercy that all might live in peace in your mercy. Gracious God, your embrace brings wholeness to all those who are troubled. Have mercy especially on Gary, Sally, Cooper, Linda, Nancy, Mike, Patty, Shunji, Cindy, Nick, Randy, Mark, Marius, Pearl, Shayla, Tom, Paul, Katie, George, Sam, Marilyn, Jared, Marcine, Wendy, Eileen, Preston, Anna, Elam, Karen, Rachel, Morris, and all those who we name now aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Grant these and any who suffer in any way renewal. In your mercy, welcoming God in your presence, strangers become companions, enemies become neighbors. Open our doors to those we have so easily shut out, particularly people who are different from us, or who are marginalized by church or society, in your mercy. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite us to turn, offer that peace to those who are watching us online. Peace be with all of you. And then I invite you to share that peace with one another. As you are done your piecing, I invite you to be seated. It is the time uh, for our offering, and certainly uh, if you have a financial gift to support the mission and ministry of St. John, we invite you to leave that in the gold plate as you go out through the center doors. You can also always make an offering online at our website, stjohnneely.org. Just click on the online giving option. This is also the moment that we have uh, taken to spending some time offering up those places where we have either ourselves experienced places that we have used our gifts that God has given us in the world or that we have seen others making use of their gifts. And so, I ask you, where have you seen folks using their gifts this week? I come back and I expect homework, right? Yeah, Marla. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Well, just being a neighbor, right? My neighbor needs a ride. I'll give him a ride. My neighbor needs some company. I'll chat with him for a while. Yeah. And his dog likes Jim. That's, and there is a benefit that comes back from making use of your gifts. Yeah. It, that is proclaiming the word by being neighbor. Yeah, absolutely. I saw a whole bunch on Thursday in those who would get up at the butt crack of dawn uh, to uh, cook eggs and pancakes uh, in the fundraiser for our volunteer fire department. I mean, just the fact that it is a volunteer fire department. These are folks who are using their physical gifts uh, to protect us. And there are others who are giving of their time and energy, their ability to flip a good pancake and cook a good egg, or even just to walk around and be wonderful hosts of uh, those who come to eat. All of these are using our gifts so that folks can be fed, so that folks can be protected, so that those firefighters, part of the, I know the monies were being used to buy equipment. Uh, I can't remember offhand the thousands of dollars it costs just to equip them so that they're safe, or at least as safe as possible in doing the work that they do. Using our gifts, is, it can be that simple. And those are gifts given to us by God. And so I invite you this week to pay attention to those places where you are using your gifts, or if you see others use their gifts, and then come back and share them with us so that we might remember that we all have something to offer. And as we prepare to receive this offering of Christ's own body and blood, I invite us to stand and sing this song as a reminder to us of those gifts that we have. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day ever came death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choir of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Hold
Holy God, our Maker, Redeemer, and Healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. I invite my communion assistants to come forward. Uh, communion will uh, go as normal, so we'll start at the back. Uh, if you're able and sitting on the sides, just come across with your row when it's time. You'll come down the center aisle if you wish to receive handout, body of Christ given for you, and you'll eat. You'll then step to the side on which uh, you are sitting. Uh, the tray has red, which is wine, white, which is grape juice, blood of Christ shed for you and your drink. As you go back to your seat, just put your cups into the white baskets. It helps us do the dishes. If you need, there is gluten-free available, just let me know. All are welcome at the table. Come.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. A couple of announcements, mostly with Vacation Bible School. A um, couple of ways that you can make use of your gifts to help. One, uh, cookies. Uh, we are in need of cookies for uh, some of the various snacks during the day. Uh, there is a sign up. Rana Peeper is uh, coordinating that uh, this year uh, and needs your help. There's a sign-up that is available out on the Welcome Center. There's also a sign-up out there just to help. Uh, if you've got even part of uh, a day that you could come and help. We've got most of our primary leaders. A lot of it is just extra adults uh, going with groups from place to place or helping out at one of the particular stations is always welcome. We also can just make use of, I know there was one year where Marlene, God bless her, just kept an eye on all the bathrooms to make sure that they were in workable shape. So even if it's that, uh, we will be more than happy to make use of your help. Candy. Um, we actually have a little left, more left over from uh, Ely than we uh, thought we might with the shorter route, but we still need some candy for the Solon uh, Parade. So if you could help us out with donations of bags, you can see some of what's out there. Uh, big non-chocolate is uh, always good. And many thanks to everybody who uh, bagged and did all of that for the Ely Parade. That was excellent. Thank you so much for that. Yes. And you'll get to do it again. See, we had so much fun. You were so good at it. But many hands make for light work. Um, we have 30 registrations so far. So we're actually a little ahead of where we were last year at this time. So we're looking forward to our Vacation Bible School and invite you to do that. Um, I think those are kind of the main announcements that I have for this week. Uh, there are other things that will be coming. I know just in conversations with some folks, there's some stuff coming up where we will be asking for your feedback, so please pay attention to that if you get things. Uh, anything that we send out will be brief, but it is important for you to respond. And so before we go off to fellowship with one another and into the rest of our days, I invite you to receive this blessing. The blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. And we sing.